All right. It was a crazy day. We had the FOMC minutes that came out. And let me tell you, they didn't uh, disappoint when it came to fireworks. We had so many rips and dips within a two-hour period. I personally cannot remember a time where we have seen this many sell-offs within in rallies within a two-hour period following the FOMC minutes. Now, the Fed meetings are different. When you have the FOMC statement that comes out, followed by the FOMC presser, those tend to be very volatile. I would say nine times out of 10, you know, in my trading career, Fed minutes are kind of like hardly even mentioned or even paid attention to. But you've had two out of the last three that have brought about great volatility. And today's was probably the, the most volatility that I've ever seen, uh, or at least I, that I can recollect from a, a FOMC minute release ever. I mean, that was some crazy, crazy movements. In fact, in just two hours, we saw a 41-point rip to the upside, followed by a 51-point rip to the downside. Now, the 41-point rip happened in just five minutes. The 51-point rip happened, or to the sell-off to the downside, happened in 15 minutes. And then you thought, okay, the market's going to go down. It's going to get really ugly. No, no, the bulls stepped in. The dip buyers came right back in. And they sent the market back up 56 points in 45 minutes. And so you're thinking, okay, so we've we've had the initial test. If the, the initial move, it didn't hold. We had to sell off, but it couldn't really continue to push lower. And then we have the rip. We're going to just continue to go until we finish green on the day. No, in fact, we had a 37-point sell-off in, into the close. I mean, really a fascinating day, frustrating day too. And, and a lot of people will tell you, hey, this is a day trader's paradise having these this many swings, but it's not. Most people think that more volatility, the better for day traders. No, I mean, this is a great way to lose a lot of capital in multiple directions in one day. In fact, for day traders, there was more areas of potential hazard than they've probably ever experienced in their careers. Because within such a small period of time, there was four or five ways to be caught on the wrong side of the trade. So what day traders will usually like is, is where the market opens down and then it starts to rally. It goes back to green and then it consolidates some, goes higher, consolidates a little bit more, goes higher. They like those days where it trends in one direction because then it allows them to continue to add to more positions and uh, increase the number of uh, different stocks that they're trading gives them opportunities to get into ones that they might not have been able to get into earlier that morning. But when you're having this seesaw effect and it's happening in that quick of a period of time, by the time they get in, the market's already reversed and back down again. So really a crazy day for the market, um, really from an FOMC statement standpoint. I've never seen really any, not from the statement, but from the minute standpoint, I've never seen anything like it. And the, the news that came out from the Fed today was nothing that should be considered uh, dovish. And CNBC, the clowns that they are over there, they're like, oh, this is great news. And then when the market dipped, they're like, oh, this is really dovish. That we, the Fed's taking a strong stance against inflation. Then it rips higher. It's like, oh, whoa, 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 this is great. So, I mean, it's it's like clown town over there. And then people are trying to trade off of what they're saying. And it just gets even more ridiculous. But FOMC minutes, I mean, they're telling us, okay, we're going to do $60 billion in uh, sales of, of treasuries each month. And we're going to do another 35 a billion dollars in sales for mortgage-backed securities. So between those two, you got about $95 billion that are going to be getting liquidated on a monthly basis. Now, inflation kicks up. Don't be surprised if they increase that even more. That's kind of like the starters. And one of the things that we've seen from the Fed is they're very cautious about taking any strong stances. Now, had it not been for the Ukraine uh, war with Russia, we would probably would have seen a 50 point basis 50 basis point rate hike over the last over the, at the last FOMC statement. We didn't get that. We got a quarter of a point because they were a little bit worried about that conflict. But going forward, I think it's safe to say that we're going to see one at the next FOMC statement that comes out in May, followed by the one thereafter. In fact, there could be multiple ones that that we see going forward. Now, April 12th, we also have the um, the CPI report that comes out, and make sure too down below. Post your comments, be part of the live stream. I want to hear what kind of stocks that you are wanting me to look over. I'm going to go through all of them here today. I'm going to go through all of my charts first, and then I'm going to get to all of your charts. So whatever questions or charts you want me to go through, let me know what you guys have, and I'll get right to them. Also, make sure to pound the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you can get all the notifications of any time I do a video or live stream or, so, or, or anything else. I'm always posting and, and providing great content, and it helps support the channel. So 
make sure to check that out as well. All right. That was the intro. Now let's get to the charts here. Here's the spy. On the surface, doesn't look like much today, right? Nice little doji candle off of the 20 day moving average. You pull up this five minute chart here. And it was a wild day. Right here is where the FOMC minutes came out. Okay. Goes right up. That's that uh, 51 point or 41 point ripper. Okay. Then you had the 51 point sell off. And then from here for about the next 45 minutes, you had like a 56 point rally followed by a 37 point sell off and then a little bit of a pop into the close. But overall, it was like, two or three months worth of price action in one day. I mean, it, that was that was how crazy it was. And um, people were trying to trade it. They were probably getting in here and then getting down here only to get in back here. Only to, I mean, it was the, the ability to lose money in a day like today highlights the importance of less is more when you're in the stock market in such volatile uh, times to be patient and not try to react to every kind of swing that takes place. And looking at the daily chart here, some definite things that I want to highlight here. This is your 200-day moving average. It tried to break above it here today. This white line could not break above the 200-day moving average and close below it for the first time since, what, um, March 23rd. You also have a major level of resistance that should cause some problems for the market on any rally attempt going forward. Furthermore, you have a new declining trend line. Okay, We don't know what the extent of this trend line is. This could be part of the of a major trend line to the downside that's developing let's say this sell-off goes on through the end of this year and into next year well then this is like the beginning of a big sell-off and um one that should be respected but we don't know that quite yet the reason why is that you also have the potential and you're going to see this on the cues as well an inverse head and shoulders pattern so you got the the initial left shoulder the head and then you've got a potential right shoulder but the thing is, is you don't know if this is a right shoulder that's forming or the next lower low in the market. So until we get clarity on this right shoulder, we really don't know because it could, like I said, it could just be part of a bigger downtrend that's that's starting to form and take hold in this market. And pl trust me, from 2009 to, to currently, OK, we've we've always seen the market go up and they say, don't fight the Fed. The Fed's your friend. Anytime the Fed has tried to raise rates, like what we saw in 2018, the market violently reacts. So now we're on that situation again now to where if it truly means don't fight the Fed, you don't fight the Fed here either by trying to keep buying every single dip. And I personally, and I can't say this for a fact, but I do personally think that this dip buying that we have seen, especially off of these March lows here from uh, March 14th and onward, is going to come back and bite a lot of traders. Um, this is not a good market at all. These kind of rips where you're just seeing the Nasdaq go up 2% on the daily isn't indicative of a bull market that's that's very healthy. It's not. It's a it typically see these things in some of the, the most extreme bear markets. And for who, anybody who thinks that this was an extreme move, it really wasn't. And this was kind of like a run of the mill sell off. Wasn't wasn't anything crazy. This is a pretty crazy move here. And we haven't seen anything like it. The one that we saw back in quarter uh, four of 2018. This was a pretty uh, significant move as well. But this one here, I mean, it was actually quite forgiving for a lot of bulls. I mean, you had massive rallies that allowed you to get back out of your positions before it was too late with either some gains or minimal losses. So that's that's what you want to keep in mind. So that's the SPY. Um, there's, there's a couple of things to keep your eyes out for this inverse head and shoulders pattern. Well, I'm doubtful that it materializes. As traders, we can't let ourselves be completely surprised by the market. You got to follow the charts and what the what the trend is telling you. So uh, that that pattern is trying to develop. We just don't know if that right shoulder is going to come to fruition or not. Then you have also the declining trend line to pay close attention to as well. So uh, two things that I want to highlight there, and not to mention that this could be part of a bigger downward channel that's developing. The cues similar similar situation here where you may have that inverse head and shoulders pattern that's forming the left shoulder head and then you got this right shoulder yeah it, it's it's definitely something to keep an eye on same thing as spy you have a declining trend line a little bit steeper on this one okay we've seen a little bit more weakness out of tech over the last couple of days than anything else in the market but three out of the last seven days it's tried to break this declining trend line look at that it's tried to break this declining trend line and could not do it so 
uh, we're, we're finding a little bit of support at the 20 day moving average. But again, this could just be another attempt to make a new low, uh, lower low in the market. And if that's the case, this head and shoulders pattern will never develop. All right. Q's, let's look at IWM and don't forget, post your charts that you want me to look at. You don't have to actually post the charts themselves. There's no way to do that. But just tell me, tell me what the symbol is that you want me to go over and I'll look at all of them uh, before the end of this thing. I'm also drinking some uh, small or Four Roses small batch here. It's always good. I always like to have a little bit of whiskey for these live streams, especially after day today where the market was just completely bonkers. You need something to take the edge off a little bit. Okay, IWM. This is kind of interesting. So there's a couple of things I want to highlight here. I first want to uh, highlight this declining trend line here. It broke it. And you also had some resistance going way back. Let's see here. I'm trying to make sure I draw this sucker right. There we go. All right. Multiple times we tried to break above it. You had this little peep. Uh, peak above the the resistance level couldn't hold it and it fell right back down now it's coming back down testing the underside of this declining trend line for for or the the top side of this declining trend line for a potential bounce now this resistance level has been very difficult for the market to get back above you can see on multiple occasions it's tried it three times in fact yes it did break it back on march 29th but did it hold above it no so so you have those things two those two things working for it, okay? You tr you got support trying to to hold as a bounce opportunity, but on the on the bearish side, you have resistance, you know, kicking kicking uh, price in the teeth. So let's remove both of those and then draw the next thing that I think is worth paying close attention to, and that's this bear flag that's developing. Okay, we have a nice bear flag. I mean, really clean bear flag pattern. So that if it gets below like this 194 level. And there's there's a diff there's probably a few different ways to draw this. Some people will tell you that this is the bear flag here and they're, they're not totally wrong. Um, I think on one of my other charts, I drew it that way as well. Yeah, like right here. That That's also one one uh, uh, other interpretation. You're, you're not taking into account some of these uh, long shadows on the chart or these uh, rallies off of the lows. That's okay to do as well. It's not a completely clean take, but either way, um, you can do it that way or this way right here. So if you do it this way, it's it's definitely not as parallel. So there's part of me that wants to probably take a little bit of the middle ground there and just go, all right, sort of like that as being the bear flag. And it's just not quite confirmed. Okay. So bear flag, declining trend line, the couple of things that are bearish about IWM that I don't like, but you also, again, have that uh, support underneath from the a broken declining trend line that could come into play. So I think I got it mixed up there. Declining trend line, um, resistance overhead. Keep an eye on those things there. Finally, VIX. I'm seeing all of y'all stuff coming here. We got plug, FSLR, CBX. We've got MO. We've got BABA. I'm going to get to all of those here. So keep an eye out for all of those charts. Finally. This VIX, man, this VIX has been totally nuts here. This is the resistance level that I've been watching very closely. And one of the things that's really interesting is that the, the stock market's really not getting what's going on in the market. The bond market is, but stocks are not. And that's why you continuously see so many retail and even, even institutions continuously buying the dip because it's something that's worked for them the last 13 years. And there's plenty of people on Wall Street right now that's probably never seen a bear market a legitimate bear market and so all they know is buy the dip buy the dip that's what's you know you know filled their coffers in the past by buying the dip and so hard habits or bad habits die hard and this is certainly a bad one for the market here because they're not taking the the risk associated with this market very serious and it may end up resulting in the mark in the fed taking aggressive action to kill the stock market by by perhaps, you know, raising it a full point or even more. Because Paul Volcker's name is getting floated around quite a bit. And if you're not used to or familiar with who Paul Volcker was, he was a Fed chairman back in the 70s. He essentially uh, drove us into a recession to get inflation under control. We had interest rates that were like double digits. Okay. You had 
mortgage payments. You think they're high right now at 5%. These suckers were double digits, like 13, 14% on the 30. Okay, so VIX, way away from testing this resistance. But if we do continue to see more upside in this market, that's going to be the level that you're going to watch to see whether or not price can close above it. We saw it for two days, but it came right back down again. So the VIX has struggled with that level. Uh, health of the market, still about 47% of stocks trading above their 40-day moving average. On the 200-day uh, moving average, you still have about 34% of stocks. For us to get to real extremes in the market, that needs to hit about um, – single digits, like three, 4% of stocks. Okay. All right. So Victor asks, let me pull his up. Do you consider Altria like a, like a smoke after this crazy day, maybe a potential break at the monthly chart. Okay. So MO is pretty good. I actually have a, that in my dividend portfolio. I like it a lot because it's got a great dividend and the, the chart, the long-term chart, and I even mentioned this in the trading block today. It was like, it's it's really a nice chart, but uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern, it's confirmed it. Um, it's broken above it. I mean, really solid day up two and a quarter percent. So there's definitely a flight to safety mentality in the stock market right now. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't be up as much as it was today. So really good, good dividend. I like the stock a lot. What do you see in, in Apple? We're talking about Apple or APPL here. I'm going to assume Apple, but yeah, it's Apple. Wasn't sure that was a symbol I never heard of before. Um, I posted this in the YouTube membership and I'll pull it up again. Um, so you have, I'm trying to find my uh, dadgum. chart here but okay we have there we go i was on the weekly chart bull flag pattern here okay bull flag pattern it's confirmed it uh late last month and it's pulled back but it hasn't broken this bull flag pattern so it's still very bullish now the only thing that's going against it is, is it didn't hold this breakout level you can see there's a little bit of a breakout level going back to january of this year did not hold it and so it initially moved above it, below it, back above it. Now it's having a little bit of a breakdown there. But what you're going to want to watch is if the selling picks up an apple, does it hold this bull fly pattern and try to bounce? If so, then it's a pullback to the breakout level, which offers a, a, a nice entry price. So that's that's what I'm watching. John Day, he's he's having a, uh, I don't know if that's a good day or a bad day for him. For uh, just a... Uh, uh, complete honesty here. I'm actually short on the market right now. Uh, I added a SDS position, which was, it's actually a long position. It's an inverse ETF two to one of the S and P 500. I added that a couple of days ago, added some PSQ today, took some profits off the table on SDS for about 4%, trying to let the others see how far uh, lower it wants to go. So, um, I am tilting a little bit to the bearish side. So I wanted to be, uh, open about that. But one thing I've learned over the years with the stock market, it doesn't pay to be uh, biased uh, blindly to one side or the other. That's why I'm bringing up the points of like the inverse head and shoulders pattern on the spy and the cues. It's something to watch. All right. Julie from Facebook asks for my thoughts on Alibaba. So declining channel that's been going on for almost eternity, it seems going all the way back to 2020 has not really had that much of a break at all in the stock. It seems it shows up really well on the on the weekly chart as well. But if you go back to the daily, there's a little bit of a basing pattern that's been forming, but it doesn't really materialize until it can break one out of this base, which is the yellow line here. But then as soon as it breaks out of that base, uh, I'm not sure when that would happen or you know how far into the future that would happen, but let's say it happened in the next couple of days. Well, then you have a massive declining channel that it needs to deal with too, that it's rejected price at on multiple occasions. So just breaking out of this base isn't good enough. It needs to break the declining channel as well because that's also a layer of resistance that's very important. The later it does, the better. So let's say it does it a month from now. These two lines are gonna be much closer to each other than they are right now. All right, Ryan Fairchild says, SQ, SPY and Q's uh, gap down to the bottom of the weekly price ranges today. Maybe a little relief rally tomorrow. It's possible, okay? The, the, the 
the dip buyers, they're very relentless. Okay. And I'm not trying to make this a, a me versus them or, or them versus me or fools versus bears. You can go to stock twits for that or, or, you know, message boards and, and get that same thing. I'm willing to be bullish when the market's bullish and bearish when the market's bearish right now, the way I'm interpreting the charts, it does seem bearish, especially with the headwinds from the fed. But uh, could we get a relief rally tomorrow? Yes, it's definitely possible. We could have another 2% update for the NASDAQ or even 3%. But uh, think about it, though. I mean, we, we're we really not oversold at all. So it's not like, hey, we're way oversold. We're, we're due for a bounce here. It's very possible that we continue to see, especially uh, if, if we continue to get a lot of hawkish language out of the Fed, that's going to drive price even further down. All right. Patel asks about plug FSLR and CVX and a new GT and XBI. So we got a, we got a handful to do there. Uh, I'll probably go through these a little bit faster just uh, so I can get to everybody else's as well. FSLR, you have a, a rising trend line here off of the lows from February. Whoops. And it has not been able to hold it. Okay. So it's broken that rising trend line. Um, Hold up pretty good there for about a solid month plus. So I really don't like it. In fact, you could even say that maybe we got a little bit of a a bearish bearish wedge there that's formed and that it's confirmed that bearish wedge. So keep an eye out for that. Let's see here. CVX. I'll get the plug after this. I like CVX. I had bought this one as a dividend stock last year sometime. I think it was like August, September, um, maybe even before then. But it was like something like in the $90 range or $80 range. And I was buying it for the dividend because I think it was like an 8% dividend at the time. I had no idea it was going to make one of these massive runs like this. I, I've actually sold out of it since then. Um, and I'm hoping I'm not like totally stupid for doing that. But what you do see here is a continuation triangle that's forming. So definitely something to watch in the coming days. Um, I need to make sure that this is on my watch list as well just from a trading standpoint, not from a long-term standpoint, but uh, definitely a continuation triangle. And as long as it's like less than 33% or a third of the existing rally, which, you know, you're going from the September lows all the way till now, massive rally. It's it's a very small part of this continuation triangle, which tends to suggest it's going to break higher, especially if oil keeps going back up as well. So this would be a, a, a trade setup worth following. Just remember that oil is very volatile right now. If you have an end in the uh, conflict with between Ukraine and Russia, that could send oil prices lower. You've seen some overnight price action with a strategic oil preserve that's caused uh, prices on oil to fall. CVX is one of the less volatile oil stocks from a historical standpoint. I mean, some of the worst news it had it drop like three or four bucks. Small potatoes compared to some of them that can drop like 10 to 15 percent on bad news. Got plug. I want to talk about the oil crisis sending everybody into electric cars. Um, that's that's possible. I just don't know if it's going to show up right away in the earnings. But pull back to this breakout level, if you want to call it. That's about. Let's see. Actually, I want to revise that a little bit here. So it, the, you have a bit of a support level at twenty seven twenty. Can it pull back to there and bounce? That's what you're going to watch watch in the coming days. And UGT. So let's look at GDX for the gold miners because it's basically the same thing, except it's just one to one. NUGT is a two to one of GDX. So a lot of resistance there. It, GDX needs to get back above 40. It's pretty much a, a straightforward chart there to get bullish again on GDX. GLD, which also plays into it, you know, it has some decent support here. I'm going to highlight two different levels here. Got some support there. You also have some support here to watch as well if, it, if the selling uh, continues to worsen. Or you can also draw the support like such because that tends to be a little bit of a support level as well. And then we got XPI. XPI, biotech ETF. You look at like IBB, for instance, they're all basing right now. Um, they haven't recovered nearly as well as a lot of your um, tech stocks have, for instance. But XBI, I like it probably better from a technical standpoint than IBB. So if it can get back above like 97.90, then 
then it becomes a much more bullish trade scenario. You've got a left shoulder right here, a left shoulder, a head, and a potential right shoulder here. But it's just not as well defined. So it needs to dip down a little bit more and come back up to complete that pattern. All right. We got through Patel's stocks. Let's look at AMC and Fubo. Okay. <laughs> um, AMC. Not a huge fan of these stocks, guys, and I'll show you why. And I've been highlighting these resistance levels for a while. If you saw the YouTube video that I did this week, I think I got more dislikes for the, the GameStop video than I've done on than I've gotten for all my videos combined in the past. I mean, the the level of like hate and emails that I got that were just completely mean spirited and uh, just awful. And you should have seen some of the comments that YouTube wouldn't even let let post it on there. I mean, there was some really bad stuff on there. So there's a lot of emotion in these charts and AMC has had some serious resistance. It did break above it, but once the GMC, GME news came out, the GameStop news came out, uh, it hasn't been the same since then. Um, I'll look at the GameStop too, and uh, I really don't care if anybody wants to hate me over it, but guys, resistance, resistance. This resistance level has been mean and it's been stubborn. And yes, it finished up 2% today, but you would think a stock split would be a positive news event, not for GME. It's been negative ever since. And Kyle likes the uh, whiskey review, so thank you for doing that. It make, reminds me to drink a little bit more of my whiskey here. Okay. So for Maxim, that's wanting to know about the end of the day. That was the FOMC minutes that came out. It was a highly anticipated one. It showed a little bit more of the intentions of the Fed and how it wants to deal with inflation. So that's where the volatility came from. And then the dip buyers trying to jump in and uh, provide some support. JXN, what technical thoughts? I was looking at a weekly chart there. It's been so short, but no, it's... Uh, Jackson Financial, a little bit of a double bottom there, broke out initially, and then it's head fake. So now you got to be a little bit skeptical of this trade. Um, for me, um, anytime you get these head fakes, I don't want to be a part of it. I go ahead and sell out of the position once it starts to dip back below the breakout level following the initial breakout. You get a good breakout, that, that's something to be optimistic about. So if you go back in time to when it was looking like that, you see that chart and you're thinking, okay, this is a good looking chart. It's breaking out. And then it completely head fakes on you. You want to get out of that one. That, at least that's that's how I trade these things. When I get those nasty head fakes like that, and you're seeing it a lot across the board with like shop. Look, I've been highlighting these things on a regular basis. They're nice bases, okay? But they're not coming, they're not actually fulfilling, okay? You take like FVRR, same thing. Nice base, but it breaks down. You take SQ, for instance. Nice base, and it's starting to break down again today. I mean, look at PayPal, um, but it broke out. Now it's actually testing its breakout level. So that's that's one to watch going forward as a potential bounce play. So, And John Day asked about PayPal as well. So I'm actually knocking out two birds with one stone. But when it comes to PayPal, I know I've marked up this chart a lot just because it's been a huge interest to me. The number of support levels that it's violated has been astronomical. The amount of faith that I'm putting in PayPal at this level, it's not going to be that great, especially with the headwinds that the market faces. Market sells off. It's likely going to take PayPal with it as well. And then ticker X on the four-hour chart. Let's see. Alex Ramirez waiting for it to hit 3470 to buy or should i wait for confirmation stop loss would be 3430 so not a not a huge stop loss and that's a that's a tight stop loss on x because x can do that make a move of one percent or more in like 10 15 minutes i mean it's just not that hard so 3470 You got a little bit of support there. So I see the, the reasoning behind the whole 3470 level. Okay. It needs to hold that level and then bounce. Okay. So 3430 or what? Yeah. 3430. Boy, that would be, that's really tight, really tight. So what, one of the things I would like to do on one, something like this, wait for the bounce to take hold a little bit and let it run and then 
let's say it runs about two or three percent. If you have faith in the stock that it's going to go beyond 40 or something, it doesn't hurt to wait for a run to like two or three percent and then maybe put the stop loss below 3466 after it's gone maybe up to, uh, you know, like let's say it goes up to 3580. Okay. After testing 3470. Manuel asks about Tilray. Tesla and Ethereum. I never know how to say Ethereum correctly. So forgive me if I don't know how to say it. I'm trying. So this is another chart that I've, I've marked up all the time. Let's see if I got a clean one of it. Yeah, this will do. Okay, so a couple of resistance levels here. Never actually tested this resistance level here. And that's because this resistance level, this declining resistance level, came in and knocked it back. And uh, this was one that I've been watching for a while, tested it, and rejected price. And that's a sharp rejection. So if you're trading Tesla, and let's say you bought it, I had some people that I know that bought it in the 700s. That should be something that's of great concern. Did it fill the gap? Not quite. It's pretty close to a gap fill. I mean, some people would consider it that, and maybe maybe they're okay in assuming as much. But uh, there's a lot of room for it to fall still. I mean, I can see it going down to like 950 with, a, with very little problem. But again, it's going to depend on a lot of, okay, if Tesla comes out with really good news, yeah, it might go and rally some. But um, if the market continues to fall apart, it's going to be hard to hold on to those gains. Tilray, this one has the potential to buck the trend some just because um, these particular stocks are are rallying really hard, the cannabis ones, and doing pretty well. So you got a bull flag pattern here. you got legislation in the House that's trying to legalize it. So, um, so bull flag pattern. You got the breakout right there. It's holding it so far. I gave up most of its gains, still finished 3%, which on a tape like today, that's a good thing. But now you got some other ones like CGC. And I think Tilray had some kind of uh, agreement with Whole Foods perhaps today that was that helping that out. But then you look at like CGC, not the same for CGC where it was down 2.8 or even MJ, which has a, a, a I believe it has a stake in, in Tilray or, or, or a lot of shares in Tilray. It, it still managed to fall 1.7%. Still not as bad as, as like the NASDAQ. HYMC, this is a Rage TV favorite. And I'll get back to Ethereum here in a second. Um, I just want to get through the stocks first. This one's hard for me to uh, make heads or tails of. It's it's really, when I mean, you got massive moves here, head fakes even. I mean, and it's kind of hard to have a head fake of 66% and then come right back down. It's pretty impressive, honestly. Now you got a bull flag pattern, but I wouldn't put a lot of faith in the technicals on these things just because these kinds of charts here, I mean, it, it's just marched into a different kind of a drummer. There seems to be a little bit of support at this declining trend line here, but even that's shady as best. Let me tell you, after a day today, and I didn't lose money. I actually made money in the stock market today with my short positions, but the whiskey tastes a little bit better today, man. That was some crazy price action. So Kyle was asking about Fubo. If the uh, bottom is with, the, let's see, if the bottom is in with the double bottom, sorry to bother. Not bothering me, man. That's what I'm doing these things for, right? So double bottom here, first bottom, second bottom. Now it's like almost like a triple bottom. It sounds like uh, that game Halo, right? I used to play that back in the day where he's like, kill, double kill. Instead of like kill, double kill, it's like double bottom, triple bottom, bottom-tacular. <laughs> um, all right, I'm not going to laugh at my own jokes here because most of you guys are probably not laughing with me. So first bottom, second bottom, third bottom, and then... Um, Yeah, so here's the here's the thing. I'm not seeing really an edge to the upside on Fubo. Like, where's the edge at, right? I mean, it's trying to bottom. It made bottom, but we haven't really seen enough out of it to say, okay, this is the time to buy. I'm not necessarily a huge believer in that you got to buy right off a of support. I like to see that it wants to break back above it. Look, Fubo, it's gone from like 35 down to six, okay? In a good market, it might be able to go right back up to it, okay? I mean, look what it did during freaking COVID. It goes from October, it goes from $8 up to 
up to 62. So if this is really like the turnaround moment for the stock, okay, well, I mean, maybe maybe wait for it to get above 811. You're welcome, Alex, for the whiskey reviews. And, and, the, and a lot of people are talking about the podcast. If you don't know about the podcast, look it up on uh, whatever app you listen to podcasts on, Swing Trade in the Stock Market. Um, really good. It's one of the things I enjoy most about life right now is doing those podcasts. All right. Let's see. Enjoy the whiskey, sir. Any recommendations Recommendations on a non-alcoholic whiskey? Is I don't know if there's such a thing. You've got to have the alcohol, right? But... Uh, if I find one, I will let you know. All right, guys. Here's the thing. Let's be careful in this market. I know there's a lot of uh, FOMO going on. There's a lot of dip buying. There's so much noise out there. There's a lot to be afraid of. And then a lot of belief that, okay, maybe this is a great opportunity to get long on the market. I don't know how it's going to ultimately end, and no, nor does anybody. Okay? But... What, what we do know is that we got to be constant managers of risk in good markets and bad. Right now, I, I haven't traded as much as I like to trade like in a raging bull market where you can have like nine or 10 positions or a full portfolio. Right now, I'm like 20% long, uh, not 20% long, but 20% bearish with the inverse ETFs. I would like to be more, right? I, I love it in a bull market where I can have an entire portfolio at work. But right now, the best way is for me to be patient. If the market affords me more opportunity to add more positions, then I will do that. But right now, I got to stay patient. And that's really like, especially on a day like today, where the market had all these, these seesaw moves. If you try to play every move, you probably lost money. And uh, to, to remember the mantra of less is more in a stock market that has a lot of volatility, because the best way to reduce the volatility in your own portfolio is by trading less and with less capital, because the market has so much cap volatility in it that it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. All right, guys. That's going to be it. Thank you. And uh, God bless.